Good morning, everybody, and happy Monday. I hope everybody had a really great weekend. I know it was a crazy travel week for quite a few of you. I was in the airport yesterday, and I will tell you, I just saw buckets of families everywhere. Uh, I have some friends who travel for work who are saying, can you believe how crazy the airports are? So I hope everybody made it safe, made it where they wanted to go safe. And if you celebrated the holiday yesterday, I hope you had a really great holiday. <clears throat> so starting off, you know, we're, in, we're starting in April now getting outside comfortably of open enrollment, maybe trying to figure out if there's an open enrollment next year or not, keeping our cards kind of close to us, making sure we're not going crazy with our finances, which is why I thought we'd bring up reusing leads. Uh, today is a great day for that. I know right now where we're falling in our sales cycle, now's the time to start thinking about, hey, I have these buckets of old leads that I have from open enrollment. How can I actually convert them into something? So that's what we're gonna jump into today. I thought we'd start with a pretty strong quote here. Every day, do something that will inch you closer to a better tomorrow. That is about recycling leads. We should do something with these old leads that we have to move us forward to that more successful, those bigger paychecks, going on those elaborate vacations, doing things that we want. So happy Motivation Monday, everyone. If you are new to this, I'm gonna quickly go through how we do this. We're gonna start with a tip of the week. We're gonna take a look at some trends. We'll take a look at who our sales leaders are, and then the end we're gonna end with the sales technique. I'll let you know that these calls are quick. They last about 15 to 30 minutes at most, just for you to pick up a few pieces of information and get yourself going for the week. So taking a look at the tip for last week, it was really about our Health Depot training. I'll tell you, we had absolutely ridiculously great attendance on that one. Uh, the webinar was basically filled. They do max out on these. So it was a really good one. We learned a lot about it. If you are not contracted with Health Depot, go take a look at it. They have a really good limited medical product. And they also have some pretty good life products. Uh, the training is recorded. It will be uploaded at hcpsales.com. The tip of the week for this week is another product training coming up. It is going on on next Monday, I believe it's next Monday and Tuesday, the 25th and 26th. Nope, that is a lie, it's Tuesday and Wednesday. So it's next Tuesday and Wednesday and that is for IMG. That is for an international product. If you ever deal with those clients that are saying, hey, guess what, I'm traveling internationally and I'm looking for health insurance when I travel. My son or daughter is going abroad for you know their study abroad trip. I want a little bit of travel insurance. You know, I used to not have that as part of my portfolio. I added this probably about seven years. And yeah, you know, it's not gonna be one of those big driving factors, but again, it's all about working with customers, giving them what they want, being that positive person to get referrals. I've actually gotten referrals just off of selling these products. Uh, yeah, you're not gonna make a ton, but it's a great thing to round out your portfolio. Kind of like what we talked about, we wanna specialize in some things, but yet we wanna have just enough where we can help the people when those one-offs happen. I would say attend this. It's gonna be a pretty quick training for it. It should be about 30 minutes to an hour. They'll go through all their different international products that they have. Um, I'm actually really quite familiar with quite a few of them. I would say attend, add them to your portfolio if you see any value there. So those are on the 25th and 26th. If you're looking for to sign up for them, they're in the training section at hcpsales.com. Go, make sure to log in take a look at the training section. It will pop up a calendar. Obviously, they'll be towards the bottom of the calendar since it's at the end of the month there. So take a look at those. It might be a pretty good add to your portfolio. Looking at the trends that have happened, well, we had a really good increase in short-term medical. Again, as usual, leading with those nat gens and the golden rules. Even though we are decreasing on the number of months that we can sell and people are still selling the volume of them. I will tell you our fixed benefit sales though are having drastic, drastic, drastic increases. We are selling more of that than ever. Uh, I will tell you fixed benefits were pretty big before the ACA hit off, actually. Uh, right before the whole, you know, our very first open enrollment, people sold a ton of fixed benefit products. They were really common. The ACA hit, made some changes to the law, people quit selling those and jumped into major medical, then short term. Guess what? Fixed benefit is back. So fixed benefit, we're having a really healthy increase. We went through fixed benefit training. Uh, if people are interested, we will even add some for that new foundation health plan that Nat Jen did release there. With that being said, with fixed benefit sales, if you've been on any of the fixed benefit webinars, they suggest selling them with accident products and a critical illness product. That way, giving them the complete bundle, the complete package concept. We did really healthy increase there in accident sales, again, leading with NatGen and VBA. Slight decrease, again, with the critical illness, so CBL and NatGen. If you are not contracted with Colorado Bankers Life, take a look. Really great carrier there. We sell a ton of it for a critical illness. That's usually about 70% of our 
critical illness sales, or CBL. And as you can expect, an increase in dental. If we're selling more policies, obviously we'll sell more dental as well because most people that we work with have teeth, not all. Leading there with the Nat Gen PPO and the Golden Rule. So overall, you know, we're doing an uptick. I'll let you know that right now we will have an uptick. <clears throat> Traditionally, May is also kind of a busy month. June will slow down a bit with the summers coming up. Uh, July will be about the same as June, and then we're going to start the uptick again. So expect right now to be pretty good, especially if we're going to work our old leads. Uh, next month will be pretty good there in May, and then June we'll expect a little bit of a slowdown, but that doesn't mean we should quit working. Taking a look here too for our sales shout out. So for our fixed benefits, which these are the people who are making the bigger checks because fixed benefits are what pays. They are now our new long-term solution plans. First place there with Robert Swander, good job. Second place as usual, Katya leading the team there and Andrew Orlikoff taking bronze home there. So good shout out to you three uh, being the top sales people as far as it goes with those limited medical products. In our short-term medical, those are still going on. Let me throw up the top three there. Good job, Elaine. Leading there with first, David taking second. David has been in the top three consistently now for about five weeks. If anybody wants to try to knock him out, good luck. And then Wendy Larson. Good job there in third. Wendy has a very good mix of both the limited medical and their short-term medical products. Keeping a healthy mix there. If you are selling your clients a short term, a limited medical can make a great supplement or you can lead there with the limited medical as well. So good job everybody with that. Now we're going to start talking about a positive way to put it, so either recycling or reviving old leads. So this is something that's important, something that we should be caring about because guess what? You spend money on leads. They cost us something to work with, right? I know here's one thing about it, being a salesperson, you know, being in sales for over 15 years now, everybody hates working old leads. Let's be honest, we dread it. Hey, you know what, you've had these leads, you've worked them, you've beat them up, you've dumped them into a pile, and you know what, a lot of us have forgotten about them. Here's one thing about them. If you're sitting there looking at it being like, gosh, you know what, my leads are really going up there, I'm not closing enough, take a look at these. You know, these are free ones that you already have that you can work. If you've been in the health insurance industry, I hear this a lot, you know what, I'm kind of new to this, I don't really have anything to work. If you've been in the industry for over three months, you already have quite a few leads that you've either not closed or not even contacted. You paid for these. You've tried them with your usual lead strategy. For some reason, you quit on them. You quit on them. These are great leads to work before, you know, everything that's going to get crazy coming up here and, you know, open enrollment. We have all summer to work on these. You can do th two things. You can either close them now or you can set them out for a little later, uh, you know, even for open enrollment. You can start kind of working on that. So here's one thing about us being sales agents. Why should we work old leads? Well, first off, <clears throat> we always focus on our quick closes, right? That is one thing that we're known for. I love instant gratification. I love instant gratification, I think, more than everybody. Uh, you know, I love just getting it done, just getting it worked. You know, we focus on our quick close. Bam, those things have already happened, right? So if you don't work old leads, we're actually leaving a good portion. Um, actually, some people some people say it's about 13% of our paycheck we are leaving on the table if we don't work these 13%. That's a lot of money. If you are looking at making six figures, let's say you just make six figures, right? $100,000 a year, that is 13 grand you are leaving on the table by ignoring it. What can you do with 13 grand? You tell me, right? With a lot of these leads, the work is already done. You've already done the legwork in the previous months. Maybe you've already even done the investigation. Maybe you've done the fact finding. Maybe you've pitched them, just not closed them. These could be the quick wins for you, right? And since, hey, you know what? We're 1099s. Our leads, they cost us money with these extra leads, just this extra bucket to work. Could be a cost-effective solution. Helps grow your conversion rate as well since they're already there. And here's one thing about it. This is great too if you're trying to change up your pitch. If you're looking to try something new, if you're looking to work with something else, these are really great leads because you know what? They're already there. You've already paid for them. You've already worked them. This, these are great leads to experiment with as well. So this is one of the things to do. You know, we've already done a lot of work on these. These are a cost-effective solution since we already own them. And hey, guess what? We've already done a lot of work. We might have left them on the table. They might have forgotten about us. These could be pretty easy, quick wins. So let's kind of talk about the how. So there are four main things to look at when you're looking at working old leads. 
The first one's gonna be organization. Second one would be kind of motivation. Third one would be tailored scripting. And the fourth one would be a solid follow-up. These are four areas I'll tell you most people lack when uh, working old leads. Little thing about me too. I hit my very first huge, huge, huge sales paycheck, the biggest one at that time in my career, by working old leads. In the company I was working at, people were absolutely amazed. They actually had me go around to all the centers in the U.S. and talk to them about working old leads. How do you work old leads? I actually called them a free pool because to me they were a free pool of leads. So I'd say, you know what, I'm going to go swim in the free pool. So these leads are important. They help your paycheck and they get you up and going. So kind of how? How do you actually do this? First, we're going to start with the planning, the organization. <clears throat> Things that I did that made me effective. Okay, I hate working old leads. But I can do anything for an hour. That's kind of my philosophy, okay? So what I do is I'd actually go through organization and I would set myself times on my calendar. I would literally color coordinate my calendar and set myself times about two hours a week where I would work these old leads. Some people do more, some people do less. I add them in a specialized old leads folder. I already told you my name. My name for them was the free pool. So I put them in the free pool and I'd organize them in groups of 25 because I can pound through 25 calls uh, if nobody answers in about 10 minutes. That's at least how I feel. Or you know what, if I'm talking to people, that takes me about an hour, honestly. So I put them in groups of 25 and that way I would start working through them, okay? I'd read, reorganize them monthly as well. Uh, you know, kind of take them instead of, I put them in my folders, I'd have different free pool folders in groups of 25, knock the people out as I contacted them and made sure again that they didn't want anything. I'd reorganize them and put them back into the groups of 25 monthly. I'd set time aside to do that. And I'd organize them by, hey, this is a lost opportunity. These are the people who do delayed decisions. These are the people who didn't answer. The reason why I'd reorganize them, I'm going to lead with a different thing if, you know, these are people who are delaying their decision or people who I've never even contacted, or people who had lost opportunity. Um, I'd have a contact timesheet as well, because I'll tell you old leads are gonna be contacted completely different than new leads. I had my best luck contacting old leads at one in the afternoon, and it was central time, just to let everybody know if you're wondering. Central time, one in the afternoon, best time to contact old leads. I couldn't really figure out why, probably because not a lot of people call at that time. Uh, so these people would see their phones go off and they'd answer it. I had ridiculously good luck with that. This is kind of what I did. I had to be organized with it and I actually had to plan. A lot of people hate doing it. Uh, they don't really like it, but if you say, hey, you know what? You're gonna focus on these 25 leads for this hour. These 25 old leads are actually people who you didn't close because of, let's say, price, right? And you know, we were pitching a lot of short terms back then. Let's kind of change it up and talk with them about these fixed benefits. Call them, maybe see if they've even had insurance. Maybe these were people who, you know, you're sitting there and you're leading with, um, they just kept pushing it back because I had to talk with our spouse. So those people, you can kind of bring those conversations back up and going again. If they are people who you've lost because they bought from somebody else, you can start leading with the question of how is your dental? How is your life insurance? Lead with something else. That's a nice thing about being organized. You're going to know what the heck is going on so you can lead with a different conversation. The second area is going to kind of be motivation. So first one is organization, second one is motivation. So motivation is a different thing. It's a different state of mind. Yes, as salespeople, we know a lot of our job is rejection, but I'll tell you working with old leads, even more of your job is going to be rejection. You have to accept rejection if you're gonna start working with these. You have to change your mind state, saying, you know what, it's actually a contact game. Uh, what I would do is when I was working my new leads, I'd have a specific percentage of people that I wanted to contact at that time. Okay. With my old leads, I would lower my standards. I know it sounds kind of goofy, but you know what? I would lower my standards saying, hey, if I can contact two or three people this hour, that was really successful. I'm going to go do something nice for myself. So I would change my state of mind from being like, hey, you know what? I need to have exactly this. I'm, you know, I'm just going in, going to have a little fun, try something different, maybe mess up my introduction a little bit, see how that's going to work, and change my goals too. I would have to lower my goals to be realistic. I would never use my best times for these. Um, I did originally when I started uh, trying to work old leads. I'd be like, hey, you know, I'm going to give them my prime time. And I lost out on sales. My paycheck's lowered right away. I'm like, oh, that was stupid. Why would I even do that? So don't use your best times. Pick completely random times during the day. Give that one a shot. And make sure to reward yourself, too. Because guess what? Motivation on working old leads is hard. It's, you're going to get beat up. You're going to feel down. Reward yourself. Do something nice. I'm an outdoors guy. 
If you guys don't know this about me, I'm actually a competitive rock climber and I'm an avid hiker. So how would I reward myself? I lived in an area that had really nice hiking paths that were quick. So I'd say, hey, you know what, you go through, you can beat yourself up a little bit, let's go reconnect with nature and get back going. That's what worked for me. Find out what works for you. I have an agent, the thing that she would reward herself with is scratch off tickets. Don't judge me on this one. That's what she would do is every time that she made it through her calls, she would give herself a scratch off ticket. You know, she'd spend 20 bucks at the beginning of the week, by the end of the week, maybe she won a few, maybe she was down, but that is what motivated her. Find out what's gonna motivate you. What are they gonna be the best rewards for yourself after working these old leads? Okay, now into tailored scripting. <clears throat> you have to completely change what you're doing. You can't walk in with like this being a new lead, like, hey, you know what, this is Dan Jacola, I'm with AHCP. Or hey, this is Dan, I'm with Dan's uh, insurance services. No, that's completely different. You've talked to these people before, more than likely, right? It's gonna be different if you have them in the, hey, the no contact folder. But if these are the people who you've worked with before, you need to tailor your script. That is why you need to organize them into specific folders. Because if you're going to be going through 25 people who have decided they needed to speak to their spouse and you never close them, that's going to be a completely different conversation than too expensive, right? You're going to open up different. You're going to have to work with them different. You're going to have to start by caring a little more. Another thing, too, that I want to tell you about when it comes to tailored scripting with old leads, big hint for you, lead with open-ended questions. These people need to be loved. I call it coddling them. So they need to sit there. You need to be a little coddled. They need to let them talk. You want them to talk to you. What is going on? What has changed? The biggest thing that you're going to try to find when working old leads is what has changed. Maybe nothing's changed. That's great. Guess what? Minute of your time. Game's over. Try to sell them something before getting off the phone. Uh, you know, see if they have dental. See if they have life insurance. See if they're traveling out of the country. Maybe add IMG onto there. What has changed? Open-ended questions. Also remind them why they originally called. That is a big thing. You want to talk with them about, hey, you know, originally when we spoke, you were looking for insurance because X, Y, Z. How has that changed? Right? A lot of times, too, I'll tell you with old leads, they're not going to be jerks. They're not going to cut you off at the phone. You've already established a relationship. They're actually a little easier to talk to that way. If you make yourself good notes, if you make horrible notes, it might be a little awkward. Then go back to the organization thing and say, hey, you know what? I need to start leaving better notes for myself. Also on these ones, one reason why these might take you a little longer to get through is leave a voicemail. Okay. Here's a concept for you. So uh, depending on what kind of leads you buy, if you buy non-exclusive leads, so leads that go with a lot of people, hey, you did marketing campaigns, you beat them up, I will tell you the last agent will quit working them at about 60, 65 days. Okay. The last agent will contact them. I'd set myself folders for these. I'd have 90 day leads, right? These people haven't been talked to in you know, 20, 30 days. Bam, leave them a voicemail. It's gonna be odd because guess what? You know, if you bought non-exclusive, they just got braided with a ton of people calling them really, really quick. They didn't listen to a single voicemail in those 60 days. Leave them a voicemail. They're actually gonna care at this point. They'll actually listen to it because guess what? They're not expecting the call. Unlike before, when they put their information and they got called by 13 people on the first day, at day 90, they're not expecting a call. I had great contact rate with that. Leave a voicemail. They're going to call you back. Now, depending on how far into the conversation you got, if there are no contact ones, you can just leave them the voicemail about, hey, you know what? You're looking for insurance needs. Just making sure you got that done. I can be reached at. You know, I have a huge product portfolio. My services are free. Uh, if you have any questions on how to leave a voicemail, we have really good voicemail training there at hcpsales.com in the recorded webinar section. If there's enough need for it, we can go through and do a voicemail training yet again. Leave a voicemail. These are big things with it. Tailored your scripting. You know, hey, you had to talk to your spouse before. How? You know, how did that go? What happened? You want to figure out the why. You want to try to change everything up, and if they don't answer, leave them a voicemail. They're going to have a pretty good contact rate with that. And here's one of the last things with old leads that, that made me really, really, really successful. Follow up. Okay. They're old leads for a reason. Somebody has dropped the ball. Maybe it's not you. Maybe these are non-exclusive leads, and guess what? They worked with three other agents. Those agents were all garbage. They wound up having a claim, the claim turned into a nightmare. They don't ever want to talk to somebody again. Follow up with them. If there's anything you can do, follow up with them. If you're gonna say, hey, you know what? 
here's the product, this is what I want to talk about, send me a brochure. Follow up with them. These people need to be followed up with. You need to actually do what you're going to say you're going to do. A lot of agents say, hey, you know what, I'll reach out to you in 10 days, and then they never put the reminder on their calendar. These people already don't have trust, depending on where they're going to fall in your different lead folders. Follow up, do what you're going to say, and go above and beyond. I'll, I will tell you, here's the thing about them. Why do I work with old leads? Because, you know what, it's not on the front of their mind anymore. Health insurance isn't on the front of their mind. I'm going to work with them. I'm going to go above and beyond. I'm going to make sure they have great service because these are people who will more than likely talk to their friends. Hey, you know what, I got a health insurance guy. They called me out in the middle of the blue. I bought insurance from them, and it was, it was just a really nice, easygoing experience because this is something that's odd that happens in their life. This is not something what they were expecting, saying, hey, you know what, I lost my job. I put my information in. It was really, really stressful. No, this is this is other things that are going on in their life. This You're now the oddity. These are people who will talk to you. Um, show them that you have your their best interests on their mind as well. You know, everything that's going on, you want to show them that you care. If you're not the best fit, move them to somebody who's going to be the best fit. If the product they have right now is not the best, go to it. Do what you say you're going to do. Go above and beyond because somebody else has dropped the ball, and you need to make sure you're doing proper follow-up. These people take a few more phone calls than what you're going to expect. They've already hung up on a lot of agents. They've already not worked with a lot of agents. They've already not bought for a lot of reasons. You have to do what you're going to say you're going to do because you know what? You're rebuilding the faith. You're rebuilding the trust into them. They're working with you yet again. So kind of a review of what we talked about. Really the biggest things are going to be organization. Make sure to set them aside. Set aside time for yourself. Motivation. Yeah, you're going to feel a lot more beat up than usual, but these are already leads that you've paid for. So go through. Change kind of your thinking hat on that. Reward yourself any way you need to be. Go get in touch with nature. Do the scratch off. You know, do a piece of a puzzle, whatever. Hey, what's going to fit for you? Tailored scripts. Take a look at the different script. Change up what you're doing. Again, and if you're saying, hey, I want to change my sales strategy. I want to change my introduction. I want to see what voicemails work. These are great leads to do it with because you already paid for them. They're already out there. And the last thing is do solid follow-up. The follow-up is extremely important with these. If you have any questions on anything that we covered today or any need any help with any of the carriers, feel free to reach out at training at ahcpsales.com. You can say, hey, Trainer Dan, I have a few questions for you, and we can start the conversation from there. I do man that box all day long for you. And I thought we'd end with a pretty good one. As I told you, I am kind of an avid rock climber, so if it scares you, it might be a good thing to try. Yeah, working old leads scares a lot of us, but guess what? It's going to be a good thing to do. It's going to be a great thing to add to your weekly rotation on things you're going to do. You'll see yourself closing a higher percentage. You're going to see yourself also not dropping the ball as much on the front end because, hey, guess what? Then they're going to get added to the other lead folders. If you have any questions, you need any help, feel free to reach out to us here at training at But if not, I hope everybody has a great week, and I'll see you next Monday.